Hello, CS27A. In this video, I want to re record um, and show you how lab nine is done. Um, and in this lab, we are going to use autopsy to examine Android 10 uh, Google Pixel files to determine the user information, um, including contact, email, social media, um, images, and so on. So in this demonstration, I will show two parts. Um, one is going to be done in the virtual machine, or if you have Windows 10 um, or 11, you can do it directly on the actual PC if you're able to install Autopsy and download the uh, files for forensic. So for um, lab nine, you can find the document in our Canvas course room in Lab 9. Um, so here at the beginning, if you are using a virtual machine, um, we would use a virtual machine that was created a while back. And on that virtual machine, we would have um, autopsy. Now, if you're using your Windows PC, what you need to do is you will need to download autopsy and install it on your Windows PC. <clears throat> so. To demonstrate, um, I'm going to go ahead and open up my virtual box. You can simply search for virtual box. And once you find the app, you can click on it. So here's my virtual box. And uh, before I launch my virtual machine, um, I will need to go to machine and click on setting, or you can also click the setting icon here. Now, in order for the virtual machine to be faster, we want to be able to um, use the settings to give it more to give it more processor and memory. So that means that um, we would need to. we would need to change the setting for our virtual machine. So let me come back to share screen here. So I'm on my virtual box. I would click on the setting, which is the orange gear. And I would go into system. And on the system, before I launch my virtual box, I can click on system, then processor. And for this lab, um, it will probably be ideal to give it more core. Um, so the original virtual machine has four core. Um, we can give it a little bit more core. So on my system right now, I have 16 core. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and give it half, so eight core. And then on the motherboard tab, um, probably should give it at least eight gig of RAM. So as I have 32 here, I'm going to go ahead and give it 10. Um, so if you have 16, you should keep at least four gigs for your uh, host your host OS. So I'm gonna give it 10,000 megabyte, but in the lab it says 8,000. So you need to give it more than 8,000. Then once I have that set up, my processor and my RAM, I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. Then I'm gonna go ahead and select the virtual machine and I'm gonna click by doing that, I'm going to go ahead and click machine, add, and then I would go into the location where I have the virtual machine. And in this case, it could be your external hard drive. Um, now, if you don't use your virtual machine, just use your Windows PC, you can run the application directly. So I would navigate to where my virtual machine would be, um, and then I'm going to go ahead and click start. So as the system boot, I'm going to, after it boots, I'm just going to go ahead and log in. And inside the virtual machine, um, I can use the autopsy and be able to scan my image. So in the next step, after your virtual machine is booted, then you would go ahead and log in. So here's my virtual machine. I'm going to go ahead and log in now. And autopsy has already been installed. So what we will need to do is we would need to visit the link that's provided here. So you would need to manually type it, or if you're using your Windows PC, you just simply click the link. 
and it's going to take you to the .zip file. So when you visit this link, it's going to bring you to the download page, and it's going to bring down the, the Android 10.zip if you're using your Windows PC. Then, um, so if you are, once you, once you find the location, so here is the, the, the .zip file. So I want to go ahead and click this to download. Or if I use the full link, it's going to download the actual the Android 10.zip. So it would then be in my downloads. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and click this so you can see. We want to click save. And this might take a little while. So it depends on um, you know, your connection speed. But in general, the files normally take a little bit. If it shows a couple hours, this will change over time. So it will be fairly quickly. So as you can see, right, um, I can download it fairly quickly. Then once I have that, I would need to extract the zip file. So you can use the seven zip that comes equipped with the virtual machine, or you can just use Windows extraction tool or decompression tool. And that will be for step 11, okay? So we would need to extract the Android 10.zip. Now, while it's doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and come back to my virtual machines. And I'm gonna access my desktop. So let's minimize this. And what you want to do is you want to create a folder called Android 10 Investigation. And this is where your scan output would be. So it's going to put your report, all the log files, some of the information that's related to the actual, um, the actual scan. So the scan, the file, it's going to come in and it's going to save it as the .8ut or autopsy file. And this is where you would be able to retrieve some of your scan information at a later time. So if you reopen the case, this is the file that it's going to use in autopsy to give you the actual scan result. So you can simply right click, choose new, make a new folder, and then name it Android 10 investigation. So I had two because I had created two separate folder for two different attempts. So once I created the folder on my desktop for my case, I'm gonna go ahead and run autopsy. So double click the icon and if you don't have this application, you can simply search for autopsy downloads and then download the Windows version. Uh, for your system. So to begin the case, what we will do next is we would need to put in some information regarding the case. So we would select the new case and we want to name it Android 10 investigation. Then we would navigate to the folder that we created in step 12. And we would select that folder. That's where it's gonna place the output from the scan. So coming back here, we're going to select new case. And we want to say Android 10 investigation. Then we're going to click browse. And we can go to the desktop. We want to put it into this folder. So we can go ahead and do that. And then we will proceed. Now, as you can see that I had previously put the the, my previous case in there, it's going to give me notification that it, it won't be able to do that. So let me close this and then I will remake another folder. So I'll call this Android 10 case. 
And this is the folder that we would use for the output. So here we would open autopsy. And once it opened up all the modules, we are going to input our new case. So select new case. And then we can say enjoy an investigation. And we will browse to our folder. And in my case, I have Android 10 case that I will select that. And then I'm going to go ahead and proceed to next. So we are now at this step in step 17. Then we're going to put in our case number. So this is the second case on autopsy that we're doing. So we're going to put 02 and then fill out your name. So for the notes, you want to put some information about your case. So for our lab, we would go ahead and put in gather and examine browser and apps artifacts. So that's going to bring it over to your report. And this is a Google Pixel 3 device, so I'm going to go ahead and include that. And I wanted to also put the version of my Android OS, which is version 10. Then we're going to go ahead and click Finish. So the next step after we set up the case information is to bring in our data source. And the data source would be the download, which is the Windows 10.zip. So I want to come back here and I wanted to see, let me see, it's going to try to resume. So I would need to extract this, however, in order to bring in the, the actual um, zip file. So, Let's come back to autopsy here. So the next step after this is to bring in data source. So we are going to go ahead and click generate hosting and then click next. Now on this one, we're not using a disk image um, or a VM file. We are going to use, and we're not using the local disk. So there are other app options. So if you're, if you're investigating unallocated image, unallocated space on an image file, you would select this and that would be where we can take a look at, you know, files that are not overwritten, uh, possibly, you know, the areas that would be um, looking at Slack. And then if you want your options and image result for autopsy, you would select this. But for this case, we're going to do logical files because the, the, the zip file that you are extracting, um, it contains just directories that would uh, be related to um, all the metadata that's inside your the Android 10 or Google Pixel. Then we're going to go ahead and click Add. And here you are going to go ahead and download to go to the, your Downloads folder, right? And so what I had done is I have the Pixel that is saved. So you would need to open up your Android 10. Uh, the compressed folder and then navigate inside and you would be able to find your pixel three. Now, when you look at it, um, I had downloaded it on my desktop, so it would be like this. And then I would go ahead and click extract all or use 7-zip to extract file. And inside it, you would see something like this. Okay, so you would see Android 10 image and document with documentation. So there are two separate version. Uh, one is going to be the cell low right, which has this. Um, the Google Geo 13A Pixel, this one has a little bit more details than what you would see with the non cellulite. So um, I would suggest selecting this option as 
you need to use this to scan. Now, if you use the other option, which is in the non-cellulite extraction, the Pixel 3, it has slightly less information regarding emails and so on. So we would go ahead and select the .zip file, which is the Pixel 3. And then go to next. So at this point, what we're going to do is we are going to proceed with the next step. So once you select the Android 10 folder, it's going to need to verify the type of things that it's going to look for on autopsy. So keep all the options that are pre-selected and PASO is not going to be set. So we are going to keep the same option that, that came default with the software. We're going to go next, and then we're going to finish. Now, it's going to call it the logical file set one host. And if you notice that it's going to start scanning down here, and if you expand this, it's going to show you the status of some of the other things like the Android analyzer. And then it's going to go through and it's going to check every single um, uh, analysis functions and it's going to give you the output. So as it scans through, you are going to see some of the additional information, like I will be able to see my data artifacts and so on. So just to speed up this process, so this process normally would take an hour plus. So sometime it would go into two hours or more. Uh, it depends on the image that you're using um, or the files that you're using to scan. Now this one is a 10 gig um, logical files for Google Pixel. So when I scanned this a couple of times, I noticed that it would take about close to two hours. So you want it to let it scan, as you can see that it would add some of the detailed information about web accounts, bookmarks, cookies, history, call logs, um, contact information, and so on. So once that gets added and when it's complete, you're going to have more details in the all the account information, the contact information, and you will be able to proceed. Now, even while it's scanned, you can actually view some information and be able to answer some of the questions. So for the sake of the video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna revert back to my scan that I've done on my, on my PC while this is my virtual machine is scanning. So on my PC, this is the scan that was done. So when it's complete, you're going to see your information like this, okay? When we expand the, the data artifacts, you're going to see communication account, device, email, Facebook, IMO, line, and so on. So it's going to give you all the extra information, you know, even on the communication apps like WhatsApp, Viber, and some of the metadata that will be related to your image file and SIF metadata that's gonna be related to the image. So when we look at the question, it tells us to take the screenshot of the scan being um, done in autopsy. So make sure that once you start your scan, take a screenshot, paste it into the document, then we are going to, after it finished scanning, you're going to let it go for a while. So you want to take a break and then come back in about an hour plus. So for the data artifacts, we are going to go into here and we're going to click on data artifacts and it's going to give you the call logs drop down. Then when we look at the call logs, we can sort it by the start time. So on call logs, it shows that I have 50, okay? As I scan uh, both things. Now, 
you don't need to extract the pixel three or the Google pixel three zip file because if you do, it's going to do the double the scan. So I'm going to go ahead and click start date and time to sort. So here it's going to show me the most recent. So this is the sending order. And if I click it again, it's going to give me the A sending order. So when you see this, you would see that the number of calls that's being made listed on the left side, and then the details of the calls is on the right side. So it would show the call history, where it's coming from, whether it's outgoing or incoming, um, which numbers, Right, as you can see some of that here. And when you click on it, you would see if there is a contact that's related to that phone number, it's gonna show that contact information. Okay. So we would see some of the earliest incoming calls. So when we sort it, we want to take a look at the timestamp, the start time. So for me, it shows that the earliest time for the call is placed. If you're looking at the incoming, that will be February 1st. And sometime it would show some phone numbers and sometime it would show addresses like this. Okay, so as you go through, you would take a look at the earliest call, the type of apps that's being used to place the call. So how can I tell if it, they're using an app to call like Viber or, um, so on the left side, it's gonna tell you whether it is an app that's used to place the call like TextNow, Viber Data. And then you can also see additional information relating to that call here. And so if I want to see the latest outgoing call as I sort it in the ascending order, I can keep scrolling down and it shows that February 14th is the latest for the or February 8th is the latest for the outgoing call. Then I can proceed into looking at communication account. So after your scan is done, it's gonna show additional of communication account, such as your device. And communication can include text, like multimedia messages and SMS. It also can relate to apps that are being used to call um, and so on. So what you will see is you would see device email information, Facebook information, IMO, LINE, phone, text now, Viber. Um, so accounts that would be related to communication. So here you need to answer the question, how many email accounts are found? So when I come back and I look at email, I would see that there are two types of email. One is gonna be for the text now app, and the other is going to be for WA. So what we would see is we would see the support and the WhatsApp. Then we can look at the Facebook account. So on here, we're going to go ahead and expand the Facebook information. So for the Facebook, we would see these are the IDs for the Facebook. And if you click each of the thread, it will tell you the ID and then the artifact ID. So we just need to record the ID. So there are four types of accounts that are found. Then we can look at the WhatsApp. So on this particular device, we have these WhatsApp account. So the WA are for WhatsApp. And then it also uses the message store. So on autopsy, it creates these 
database file that would contain the records for the call or the accounts. And as you look, right, it would tell you. And WhatsApp would use phone number as part of the address. So you would see the phone number at and then as whatsapp.net. So we can identify the number of WhatsApp accounts found. And for me, I would have this many. So we would have 12, it's list 12 there. Then on the next one, um, it tells you to look at the email and look at the first ID. So we come back, we would click on email. And the first ID is this value. So it is part of the account information. Then um, we can say that it is a WhatsApp account. On the left pane, we then now want to examine our phone section. So you're going to go ahead and click on um, the phone. So here um, it shows contacts and it shows the multimedia message, some text now, some WhatsApp. And you can sort it by ID, you can sort it by source name. So you just click the tab to be able to sort it. So it asks you to look at the MMSS. So on the MMSS, we are going to look at the account ID. So this is the account ID information. Then we can now look at the social media that's installed. So we are gonna go ahead and click on install program. So here's the install program. Now on the Android platform, what you see is some of the application would have um, various portion of the app being installed separately. Um, so for example, like Android Google Camera, um, Android Chrome, Android QMS, and so on. So it treats it, these as separate applications, even though it might use it for example, Google Maps or Google Docs or something like that. So we need to look at social media accounts, okay? So as you scroll down, you would see quite a few social media accounts. So there's Facebook. And then um, you should be able to find Twitter and also some other social media account on here. So you can sort by program name. There's also um, digital wallet that was installed for the app. So as you scroll through, you will be able to find a different type of application that was installed, okay? Such as Facebook, Instagram, and so on. Then we want to look at the communication and messaging app. We already know that the user used WhatsApp and Viber. <clears throat> and there was also Google Voice over IP. Um, so on here, you would see some messaging apps like Skype and so on. So as you go through, you would take a look at some of the app information when it was installed, um, so the timestamp and the type of application. Then we would look at the multimedia apps such as your music and uh, sound streaming, uh, video streaming. So we would see there's YouTube. <clears throat> 
there are a number of them. So there's some Android video for the Android applications. Um, Android music. So there are quite a few media-based type of applications that was used. Then now we are going to take a look at the text messages or the and the multimedia message. So on the left, you would click on messages. And so it would tell you the type of messages, whether it's through Viber or simply a multimedia message or never, and so on. Okay. Now, what I wanted to see is I wanted to see an outgoing message to this phone number. So when we come back here, we can look at, we can sort it by directions. So for the outgoing, so you have to click it a few times and then we would search for the phone number. So here's the, the outgoing, that's through Viber. Now in some of the text message, it would come through pretty transparent. Like it would show the text, for example, this one good here comes the picture. And we can also sort it. So if I sort it from the earlier date, which is in January, uh, to find that phone number, and then we can go. So on this application, you can't have multiple filter. You can only either sort it by date and time or in incoming and outgoing, or we can do it by phone number. So if we just look at that phone number for the 919, um, and then we can look at the outgoing. So instead of the call, so that will be your message here. Then next, we're going to look at the web account. So here, it's going to tie some of the accounts to some web application. Um, like, for example, this user uses TikTok. And so this would be, and it shows like what kind of things that they use through TikTok. Um, also for Signal, there's the Gmail account. So as this is a Google device, um, you see that it would require a Google Gmail account to, to access. And then there is also Twitter account, WhatsApp account. So it gives you the user ID information, your TextNow account, Skype account, um, Gmail account, and so on. So as you look at those, you want to put down the Twitter ID and the Gmail account information. Then we are going to look at the URL in the bookmark. So this is where the browser investigation comes in. And the cool thing about autopsy is it's going to give you a lot of information all in one shot uh, versus you know, some other software you kind of have to separate or you have to perform different tasks in order for it to give you pieces um, of information that would relate to either browser or email. So now we're going to look at the, the bookmarks. And in Windows, that will be referred to as favorites. But in Android, that will be bookmarks. So on the left, you would see bookmark. And here, we would see two, right? They, it, basically, it's just one website. So it's the CFR edsnist.gov, that's the website that they bookmark. 
then now we're going to evaluate cookies. So in the lecture this week, we talk about how to be able to determine cookies and bookmarks. And um, the author mainly focused on where that will be saved in Windows system. Um, but on the Android, when we're using autopsy like this, it's going to categorize your cookies. So when you're using a, a web website or a web application that will require some form of cookies, right? You accept the cookies and the cookies get created. So it shows the date created and it shows the expiration date of the cookies and what type of cookies it is. So Chrome stores a lot of cookies, right? As you can see that these are some of the website and along with Facebook. Um, so it would store it as Chrome cookies for facebook.com. GitHub, Google, and so on. So the question asks us to look at um, the type of cookies, and then we're going to click on the date created tab to sort it. And we would identify four websites that would store the most recent cookies. So when you do that, you're going to click on date created and it's going to go in ascending order, the earliest to the latest. So you would record these last four Casa Le Media and then uh, ADNXS.com, myvisualik.net, and google.com. Those are more of the recent cookies that were created. Then we can sort it by URL. So on the URL, you can click the tab and here it's gonna give you alphabetized URL. So we want to see advertising.com. So advertising.com cookies were stored on February 1st, 2020. So this is what you would see. And Cookie, cookie files is very important in forensic cookie stores, potentially store, you know, a lot of like the activities that would relate to that session. Um, so we would then, after we find the cookie information, we would then be able to evaluate the cookie. So here it, it gives you a list of cookies that was used on that device. In the next part, we're gonna look at web history. So on autopsy, you can click on the web history and it shows all the sites that were visited. And you can also sort it by date access, which I did here. That's gonna be the most recent to the earlier time. So the question asks you to look at Google Shopping website. So when did the user actually access Google Shopping website? So you can come back here. And so for the Google Shopping, the user used Famicom. So here it shows the date, which is February 1st. And with that, sometime that you would see that also related to the cookies, right? And the bookmark and the account information. So some of these are intertwined together. We can draw the relationship between different areas um, or different information that's found that will be related throughout and to be able to establish the forensic timeline, like what we talked about in the lecture. And then we want to see when they first add the picture to Facebook. So coming back, now you're gonna look at Facebook. So here I show that um, on January 29th, the user had uploaded the picture to Facebook. Then we're going to look at web search. And for web search, it could be um, voice commanded search, where it would convert that to text. And you would see that in the details for autopsy. Or it could be a text input search. So here I show some search. And it asks you to look at the number of web search. So it would give you the summary there and the direction search. So for the user to look up the direction, if you look, there are two 
it shows that give me direction to Sir Walter. And then I need direction to 7629 Purfoy. So there were two direction search. Now on the next part, we are going to look at EXIF metadata. And this is going to relate to image or picture files. So we're going to go to EXIF. And for the first image, if you click on it, it would show you the thumbnail image. And it, this might take a little bit to pull. So um, once you click on it, it would be able to show you the details for the image like this. And then another cool thing is you can click on the file metadata tab and it tells you when it was created, when it was accessed, when it was modified, when it was changed, um, the hash value for MD5 and SHA 256, and then the internal ID for that particular image, the size of the image, the type of the image, so when we see that image, if you that will be under the application tab, so you have an idea of what image that is. So in investigation, sometimes we need to look at the type of in what image it is and how it was accessed when it was accessed. So for the first image, what you can do is you can look at the exit metadata. Okay. And so let me get back to my screen from earlier here. And on the right side at the top right pane, you're gonna see the date created, the device model. So it shows the Nikon D7000 was used to take the picture of this. And it is a JPG file. It was created on August 14, 2017. Then, um, so that would address these two questions. Then we're going to click the second image file. So this is going to show up with your thumbnail image. And then it's going to show you how the photo was taken. So SF gives you the device that was used to take the picture and when that picture was accessed, what type of file and the size of the file. So come back here, we are going to go ahead and click on the second image. In the second image, you would see a gray car. And this is um, taken, it was taken on September 17, 2019 using the actual device, which is the Google Pixel 3. So we need to describe the image, when it was taken, and what device was used to take the photo. Then on the next step, we are going to look at extension mismatch detected. So after it scans, this is going to show up. So I have 12,714 mismatch detection. And some of them, the majority of them is a MIME type image. That means that it is an attachment through email. So you're gonna go ahead and click the fourth one. And on the fourth one, you would see that it is a dog face panda. and when it was created or accessed or modified. So when you click the image, you would then click the file metadata and it shows that it was accessed on February 15, 2020. It was modified on February 9, 2020. It was created also on February 9, 2020. So the same time it was modified and nothing was changed, only was accessed at a later time, approximately um, a week later. Okay. 
Then we are going to click on user content suspected. So on the left, you're going to click here. And so it lists the type of files. Um, and then sometime it would give you the ranking based on uh, how useful that image would be to the case. And here, sometimes it shows unknown, but there should be some ranking involved in that. So we want to go ahead and click on the fourth file. So let's come back to the top. And then we're going to click on the fourth file. So the fourth file just show some rural land with building. Um, it looks almost like a park or rural land. So you need to make sure that you describe what image is displayed. And then after that, we are going to go into the file metadata. And it's going to show you um, when it was modified. So it looks like February 9, 2020 was the modification date. It was accessed a week later, February 15, 2020. And then it was created also on February 9, 2020. So we would see that it was modified on February 9, 2020. Then um, for the next part, you're going to click on the top menu images and videos button, and you're going to click on the, you're going to view the category information on the left. So if the image is recognized to have content that would relate to child abuse or child exploitive uh, materials or anything that's explicit to children, um, it would give you the number of count once you click that tab. So here at the top, I'm going to go ahead and click images and videos. And we want to make sure we select all, click OK. And on the bottom, so it's going to run through the images and it's going to give you the number of files that would be either non pertinent, uh, child abuse material, exploitive material, um, child uh, ex explicit animation, or comparison images. So there's none, zero. Then we would then close our image gallery. I have multiple here, so we're going to X this out. And we're going to come back to autopsy. Then in the next part, we would want to find out where in the physical location using geolocation where the device was used. And on here, this particular software is going to give you the state. Um, it's going to pin the location on this United States map. So we are going to go ahead and click geolocation. And it shows here. So if you want to know which state it is, right, you just open up your state map and then find the state where that geo uh, that geolocation was tracked. So for that answer, make sure that you look at the state, the United States map, and be able to identify the state. Then we're going to come back to autopsy so we can close the map. And we're going to come back here. We're going to click on timeline. So this is going to graph out the timeline of events for you. And if you want to look at specific year, you simply click on it and it color codes it for you, which is nice. So we want to look at what happens in 2020. So when you click that bar on 2020, it's gonna give you the ascending sort of the event. So it actually, what type of events were logged for Fe January 1st, 2021? So here we see that Yahoo web cookies end. So when you click on that, it shows you what happens. Okay, so a lot of expired cookies um, for 2021. Now we are going to use the discover, the discovery option on here. So let's close the timeline. 
So we're going to go ahead and use discovery. And we're going to click OK. This is a way that we can identify specific type of file. So if you want uh, images, video, documents, or even network related files. For this particular step, we are going to look at um, all type of images to see what kind of files are found. And then we're going to find the large size images. So when you, if you select all, right, and then you click search, it's going to give you a lot of different type of images. So it's going to pull all the images from what we've seen before. But if you only select large, you're going to find that there are going to be nine images that are going to be shown. So these are all the images. It gives you six pages, okay, for all sizes. And it tells you that there's one unique, two to 10 that are rare, and common is going to be 11 to 100. Now, what if I want to only get the large image file? So I would then use discovery, and I would uncheck all of them and I would only check large. And then I want to go ahead and click search. So it shows here that I have nine images. So you see a phone, you see, so when you click on it, it's going to give you the overall display, workhouse, a building, uh, some flower pot, a car, beach, That is large size, and we didn't look at XL, right? We only looked at large. So now, after I'm done with looking at some of my images, and depending on the size, well, I'm going to do close this, and I can generate report. Now, if you don't see this button here, you can go to tools and then click generate report. Same thing. So you have an option to generate report in different format. Um, in the past, we have used Excel report. You can also put this into a text file um, and other type of file. So depending on the type of cases that you're working with. So for this one, for the easy access, we are going to keep the HTML option. And you can add header and footer. This is going to give you additional details on your report. And then you can select the type of, so you would only have the logical file set one. Is I scan two times, so it's going to show two. And then we want all the results. So we're just going to finish. So you can click on the link, and it's going to take you to the report. But this report exists in the folder that you created on your desktop. So it tells me the software information. which is the software that's used to scan the, the files, okay? the application that we use to scan, and then the ingest information, what kind of things that, that was used to, to, to look up, and then the beginning information that we put in into the form, and the type of image information that we use, so what you can do is you, you know, once it's finished, it's going to give you all the count information for, you know, all the details that was gathered as artifacts. So once you have your report, take a screen capture of your report. And then, um, we are going to answer the questions. What did you learn by doing this lab? How can you apply the learn concept in mobile forensic practices? And then you would be able to submit your lab with screenshots and the answer to the questions. Thank you for watching this video. This video just captured lab nine in CIS 27A in which 
we investigate Android 10 Google Pixel um, it, and we use autopsy to scan um, and examine the artifacts where we examine photos, accounts, web accounts, web history, browser history, bookmarks, um, calls, um, call logs, applications, um, and, and many other things that would exist in an Android mobile device, such as a smartphone. 